Sup, it's Abba. Welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for clicking the video. Now I'll show you how I 3D modeled Popstep from My Hero Academia Vigilantes to make a VR chat avatar. I start by modeling the body using a circle with a mirror modifier and just extrude the edges down, trying to match the shape of the reference images. I prepare the edges for the pelvis. The legs are just new circles that are attached to it. For the topology of the knees, I use a triangle pointed forward on each side of the leg, so they bend properly when rigged. Here I add the Rigify rig to use as reference for the proportions of the model. For the head, I use the same method I've always used, a loose vert with a mirror modifier, which is then extruded in the silhouette of the face. The eyes are just loose circles extruded and joined to the rest of the quads of the face, and also extruded into a hole inside the head so the iris can float inside later, giving the illusion of an eyeball. It's the same thing for the mouth. The ears are just quads that follow the exterior part of the ear, then some quads are extruded inwards. Then the entire ear is attached to the head mesh by merging verts where possible. Now I go around the mesh adding edge creases and sharp edges so that the subdiv modifier does not destroy the volume and shape of the model. I duplicate some quads from her eyelids and extrude it to give it volume for the eyelashes. Then I adjust its shape according to the references. The iris is just a regular circle, floating inside the eye socket. The highlights are smaller circles floating in front of the iris. In front of the eyes, I extrude a separate mesh that will use the transparency of the texture to create the eyeshadow. Two curves are added. The first will be shaped to be used as the object the second curve uses as a profile to fill its shape. Then, by duplicating and extruding the second curve's points, I go around the head making the overall volume and its direction. Then I convert the curve into a mesh and fill in the empty spaces between the strands of hair. Since this character has bulky curly hair, I also add a solidify modifier to the mesh. By using sculpt tools, I adjust the shape of the hair to match the references. For her ponytails, I add extruded quads with a pointy end, all around a quad sphere, matching the reference image. 
Then I join the vertices of the base of all these pyramids to the sphere. After the base shape is ready, I use sculpt tools to move the hair around so it matches the references. For this model, I modeled the hand the same way I always do, until the time to join it to the arm. I first added the Rigify rig, then I positioned the hands and fingers around the standard position of the bones, just so I would not need to make so many adjustments to the rig later. All fingers will just bend correctly out of the box. By duplicating her thumb, I can add all the toes for her feet. Then I add more edge creases and sharp edges so the mesh maintains its volume when the subdiv is added. Now I start to model her outfit. Earrings are just simple quad spheres. With a circle, I model her belt and skirt. Her gloves are just extruded out of a loop on her arm to give it volume. Her shirt is just a cylinder shrink wrapped around her body, converted to a mesh, then just adjusted to the shape of the reference. By duplicating her legs and scaling it along its normals, I make a new mesh for her boots. Her bat wings are made by extruding single vertices that have a skin modifier to give shape to the bat fingers. Then I extrude quads between the fingers to create the webbing of the wings. Her teeth are made by adding a circle, deleting half of it, and extruding it upwards then inwards to give volume. The tongue is a cube with subdiv modifier squashed down to a disc. For the rigging process, I delete all face bones of the meta rig, generate the rigify rig, then parent all the meshes to it with automatic weights. If the automatic weight paint causes any issues, I simply go and fix it by hand. I then add a shape key to the body's mesh to fix clipping issues with the outfit. 
Generally, I simply select singular loops and scale them to a single point in the middle of the loop, so they don't go glitching out when the rig moves them. Now I add all the necessary bones for the physics to the rig. By using the face it add-on for Blender, I create the face rig and all 52 air kit shape keys, and then I fix any clipping and weird glitches by hand. Then I UV unwrap every mesh. I use the add-on UV packer to organize the UV islands automatically and separate the islands into two UV spaces. One is for every mesh of the model's body, the other contains all the meshes for the outfit and hair. There really is no secret, the process is just time-consuming. For this model, I use the free add-on UQ Paint to create the textures. This free add-on allows you to create texture layers in Blender, just like every image editing software out there. If you don't have the patience to mess around with the shader nodes, it's a great add-on. I create an empty layer, then paint all the base colors of the character, then in a different layer, I can paint more details. You should create a folder in your drive somewhere so that you can save all the layers into when painting. It might save you some headache when using this add-on. Since I have some experience with digital painting, I just paint everything in the same layer. I just use the different blending modes for the brush to paint the shadows. I often change the brushes settings from space to line so that I have more control when painting straight lines. I'm also always checking the occlude box for the brush on and off so that the brush affects the backside of the mesh. Useful when painting shadows.
Hopstep's hair is bulky and curly. However, in the 2D art, the shading is so stylized that it wouldn't make much sense in a 3D shape, so I decided to paint it in my own style. After the model is complete. I export it as an FBX file, import it to Unity, then configure all the shape keys of the Vizmi's blinking animations and face tracking. Add the necessary toggles and physics bones. Then I upload the avatar to VR Chat to test it. And that's basically all there is to it. If you want to see the complete model, it's at my Sketchfab page. The entire unedited time lapse is available to my Kofi members, and the VR Chat avatar is available at my Gumroad page. Links to everything will be in the pinned comment. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you another time.